What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Tea with Carly. I'm really excited about today's episode because I have a special guest. This is the first time ever in Fascinative English History that you're going to hear somebody's voice that's not my own. So you should be very excited too. But this special guest is extremely special to me because my husband is here. I thought with this topic of dating culture in America or just dating lingo, I thought, who else should I invite other than my own hubby? Which if you don't know, it's kind of a little slang word we use for husband. So yeah, I want to introduce to you all the man behind the curtain. He is also my editor, Davis, my husband. Thank you. Thank you, Carly. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on, Carly. Excited to be on here for the first time. I know, right? It's really weird that um, you are in front of not really the camera, but the mic and not behind the mic doing all this stuff or whatever. Would you still say behind the mic? See, this is where English gets confusing because he technically still is behind the mic, but in a different sense. You are going to edit this video too, but you're also going to be in it. So I'm really excited. So I want to just go ahead and jump right in because we actually have some really juicy things to talk about today. Don't worry. We keep it PG here. This is a safe zone, PG-13 maybe. But I have a question that I want to ask you, Davis, and I want to ask you, what is your personal definition of a red flag? But before you give your response, I want everybody to know what a red flag is. So the actual definition of a red flag is a metaphorical warning sign indicating potential problems, issues, or negative traits in a situation or person, often in the context of relationships. Now, that is a very long definition, and I'm sorry that this is a podcast and not an actual YouTube video. It's not gonna pop up on the screen for you, but let me sum it up. When it comes to relationships and in dating, a red flag might just suggest that someone's behavior or attitude could lead to trouble or conflict. So it signals caution or the need to reassess the relationship. So now that you have the actual definition, what is your definition, Davis? Because everybody can interpret it differently. For me, red flags, my own definition would be it is relationship threatening. So when you're dating someone, you want to find these red flags that will determine whether the relationship is a make it or break it type situation. I agree. So I want to go ahead and ask you, are there any red flags that I have? I know this might be another topic for another day between us. We don't want to have any fights coming on (laughs) on our podcast today. Um, But I have a similar definition. Yeah, when I when I try to even if I make relationships as a friendship or, you know, meeting even coworkers, it doesn't have to be like, you know, your potential suitor, like your future, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Obviously, that is very important too to look out for red flags if you are potentially becoming in, in a relationship, a intimate relationship with someone. But even with friendships and stuff, some people can just be very toxic which I don't want to, you know, step on any toes or hurt anyone's feelings. But some people can just be hard to be around. And I know you just have to find your person and not to get all lovey dovey. But I do think I found my person when I found you Davis. And I know everybody listening is like, ew, gross, teacher Carly. But no, Davis and I, we vibe really well. And yeah, I don't think there's any red flags when it comes to you davis i I didn't find any i mean maybe you're still hiding them from us it's been six years but (laughs) maybe you're still hiding the the red flags but anything to add i have zero red flags okay that's very good for you you have quite many i've been thrown under the bus i've been thrown under the bus send help no i'm kidding i'm kidding um as of right now you don't have any red flags for me But early on in the relationship, you had one big one because, yeah, you know where where I'm going with this. Early on, you did one thing that I really did not like. And immediately, I thought you would be a Karen later on in uh, our relationship life. Oh, is this about your mom's? gift this oh my goodness you guys okay so this is this is not a red flag and this is not scripted we did not plan on telling this story because i wanted to kind of stick to the script but if you want to go off script and you want to talk about red flags mister let's take it there (laughs) yeah so this one time uh we were buying my mother-in-law a gift for mother's day and this was before she even became my mother-in-law i was just starting out dating davis we had only been 
dating a couple months actually. And there were signs all over the store uh, that we were at saying that if you buy a Mother's Day gift or if you buy this type of, I think it was like a Michael Kors item, like purse or wallet or whatever, they will gift wrap it for you. So I bought, well, we bought her a gift and it was Michael Kors. It was like a wallet or something. And so I asked, I was like, hey, what about the gift wrap, the free gift wrapping for Mother's Day? And she was like, we don't do that. And I was like, well, there's signs all over the store saying that you do that and ex- explicitly stating like Michael Kors. So I was like, oh, this is like the one of the whole reasons because we don't want to have to wrap it ourselves. We want to like, you know, do this. So yeah, I kind of didn't really comp- I wasn't a Karen. I just went back and I took a picture of the sign and then I brought it up to the to the employee and was like, see, and that's all I did. Yeah. That was where the red flag was taking that extra step to call her out on it because I don't like confrontation at all. I will. I would rather gift wrap it myself because I can do it. I've watched many YouTube tutorials. <laughs> all right. So that was the only red flag. But I, I've never done anything super Karen like. Oh, and if you're listening, you don't know what Karen means. I guess it's kind of a slang term now uh, that we it's like a label. So Karen is an actual name. It's very common in English. But when you are called a Karen, it means you're the type of person that likes to complain about things or be very nitpicky or something, you know, ask to speak to the manager or something like that. I'm definitely not that kind of person. But in this first case, I wanted to make a good impression on my future mother-in-law. And I definitely wanted it to be like professionally gift wrapped when they said they offered that service. But I haven't been a Karen about a bunch of things, right? I think Mm, you kind of mellowed me out. You've definitely calmed down on it because I think you know that it makes him upset. It yeah. It makes me upset. It puts <laughs> me in the most awkward situation and you'll probably hear about it later on that night. Davis is one of these people that if he he could be like allergic to a food, but if they bring it to him mistakenly at the restaurant, you know, like he ordered a burger, but oh, yeah. they bring him something totally different, he'll still eat it and die in the process oh, because yeah. he will not I'd rather choke and die and, and return the food. <laughs> The he will great. not <laughs> he will not return their food. So yeah, okay, so that I guess that is a red flag. I didn't know I had. I'm so sorry. Davis, I could I I did think of a few extra red flags maybe about you, but I'll keep them to myself for now. Another story for another day. But I have a question and please answer with a story. All right. So this one's gonna be interesting because technically what I've been told, I'm like your first actual long-term relationship that you've had so your first wow. long-term girlfriend i think we you can could have left out. that out uh, <laughs> but I'll keep it in whatever <laughs> i want to i want to know have you ever slid into someone's dms but before you answer let's give the definition of what sliding into some somebody's dms or sliding into dms actually means this just means sending a private message on social media to express interest so we live in a day in an age where social media is like everything so you see someone pretty or someone handsome and you're like oh i like what i see and you just send them a message that's called sliding into someone's dm so i'm interested davis before you met me hopefully before you met me (laughs) have you ever slid into someone's dms i have slid into many dms oh casanova Lots, lots of dms but obviously the, those dms never went anywhere i guess i wasn't their typer or something maybe i was a bit in the ugly field but oh stop it yeah well anyways you're just a little shy sometimes i am i am a little shy actually i'm a lot of shy <laughs> <Introvert>. <laughs> i'm very introvert but during that time i was a hopeless romantic type of person so i slid into anyone i found attractive a lot of times i would get ignored <laughs> So I took <laughs> took that as a cue. But if you said hi back, I immediately thought you would marry me. <laughs> so I fell quick during that time. It was hard for me to read any kind of flirty social cues. So, you know, you say hi, we're getting married. <laughs> that, that, But, you know, I'm glad that maybe uh, the path of, of being an introvert put me on. I met you. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah, Davis and I kind of balance each other out perfectly because I'm extremely extrovert and Davis is introvert. But he since he's met me, he's like a lot less introvert than he was beforehand. So I guess I'm rubbing off on him. And also he rubs off on me as well, because I used to be crazy extrovert. I would talk to anyone and everyone doesn't matter. And these days, you know, it's not like I'm becoming an introvert but i pick and choose i pick and choose uh for me i don't think i've ever really slid into anyone's dms anyone that 
mattered. Like I sometimes comment on Taeyong. He's a he's a uh, K-pop star. I like comment like, oh, please marry me. I used to do that back in the day <laughs> or just like, wow, I'm totally in love with you or, you know, stupid stuff like that. But I don't think I've ever slid into anyone's DMs. That's maybe to be a friend. Yeah, I have this uh, person that I follow. Um, she lives in Japan and she's an American and her style is just really cute. And I just like commented one day like she's an instagram influencer i just commented like hey i love your style and we started talking for a little bit but it wasn't anything like romantic like you know typically when you use this phrase it's like you're sliding into somebody's dms because you want to start a relationship with them but i don't think i've ever done that yeah i don't think girls really slide into the, the um, dms i think that's more of a guy thing uh let, let us know in the comments do any girls slide into any guys dms yeah because i think it's you know, girls can shoot their shot too. And uh, that's another, that's a bonus one. Shoot your shot. That means you you give it a try. You never know what the guys are going to say. So just mm. give it a try. So yeah, the next question I have for you, Davis, and I know this podcast is a little different than what we usually do, um, but it's fun. I like it. It's more laid back, more chill. Yeah. I love having Davis on. I, I actually think this is more comfortable for me. Like this is going to sound very mushy, but you know, the topic is like couples and dating and stuff like that. But Davis is like my rock. He's the one that if I'm ever feeling like anxious or overwhelmed or nervous, I just have to be near him and everything feels better. Like everything goes away. So even recording, sometimes I get a little nervous. I speak fast or I stumble over my words. But today's podcast is going over pretty well so far. I, I can agree with that, you know, uh, in the term of being each other's rock, because if we were to go on double dates or anything like that. I always ask you, please go to the restroom now. That way you don't leave me in this awkward conversation with two people that are your friends and, I, and I'm just the plus one. When you are there with me, I f all the nerves are gone and I can just like be one with the conversation. Mm -hmm. I also think that circles back to you being an introvert a little bit yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I think just a, just a little bit, baby. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. All right. So next question is, do you think it's OK to play the field while dating? So this is like not the actual dating. So here in America, you can be dating and you're actually going out with somebody, right? Like you've made it official. You are boyfriend and girlfriend. You're dating. But then also you can be dating and you can just be trying it out like first date. Like you're not boyfriend or girlfriend yet, but maybe you guys want to try it out and then the second date and then the third date and we also call that dating so it can be a little bit confusing you're like oh i'm dating someone but they're not my boyfriend or girlfriend yet i'm just like seeing where it goes all right so when you are in that stage where you're seeing where it goes do you think it's okay to play the field before making it official the definition of playing the field means dating multiple people without committing to one. And when I say dating, again, nothing is official. You do not have a boyfriend. You do not have a girlfriend yet. You are just trying to potentially gain a boyfriend or girlfriend, but you have a date with this girl, a first date with this girl one day. And then the next day or the next week, you have a date with a different girl because you don't know yet who you like. So you are playing the field. Do you think it's okay? Okay, so this topic i want to say so in the the term of dating yes when you're going on dates quote unquote dating you're going on dates with multiple people to see who is the right fit for you if you are not making it official with someone i think it's okay but you have to walk that fine line of not dragging someone along and making them mm -hmm. think that you are all for them like saying oh i love you i love you this oh i think you're the one for me you're perfect and then saying that same thing to the next person mm -hmm. i think you you have to walk that fine line of keeping it as like an interested friend mm -hmm. to see if you, if we vibe and mm -hmm. it goes somewhere i think that is okay to answer your question yes i think it is okay to date other people without making it official yeah play the field a little bit yeah so if you're playing the field and telling everybody that you love each other and and like that they're the one for you and everything that's just called being a player which is a bonus word for you all <laughs> yeah if you're a player it means you're dating multiple people at once or you know not even dating you're just seeing multiple people at once so i kind of agree with you davis i think it's totally okay uh to play the field while dating because i mean i'm I'm someone who has a fear of commitment, as you know, because I'm your wife and you know by now. Yeah. <laughs> I have FOMO, a fear of missing out. So when I was back in the dating scene and 
sorry to tell you this, Davis, live in front of people, but I played the field even with you. Uh, we we were seeing each other for a couple months, uh, you know, talk talking and dating here <laughs> and there. Yeah, oh, likewise, look at that. He played the field as well. But I was also talking to uh, a couple other dudes as well. Obviously, it didn't work out. But yeah, I, I played the field because you never know, you know, especially when you when you're single and you're like, you know, I don't know what I really want. Uh, and I don't I haven't had that spark with someone yet. Then you kind of play the field until until one of them gives you that spark and another bonus word look at this spark is like what we say when there's that feeling of that first feeling of love or even just like deep interest like you have a spark like wow i really think this relationship has a chance you know that's what a spark is at least my definition what about you no i can i completely agree that is the perfect description of the word spark yeah so i i had that spark first in our relationship i think well i mean davis was already in love with me he just wouldn't admit it Uh, (laughs) no but i i did realize um after a few months of playing the field i realized i don't want to play the field anymore i i kind of really liked this guy and we gave it a shot and here we are like six years later or whatever yeah it's getting a little mushy over here let's let's continue on let me wait wait a second let me um let me mellow out this mush. I didn't feel that spark yet. Wow. Until you kind of put me on the spot. Yeah, when Davis said I put him on the spot, um, it means like I kind of made him make a decision very quickly about where the relationship was going to go. And um, back then, I, if you guys don't know a little history about myself, I don't mind sharing. I uh, was recently divorced and I honestly didn't think I wanted to have a serious relationship again, or I didn't think I would find a serious relationship again. But at the same time, you get lonely. So I was prepared to, you know, play the field a little bit and everything. And then when I realized that Davis is like my type and very similar and we like we have so much in common, I literally told him, (laughs) I was like, if you don't want to date me, I'm totally okay with that. But I don't even think we can continue our friendship because I have feelings for you and it wouldn't be fair to my feelings to to continue this friendship and just make my feelings get stronger and stronger. So I kind of put him on the spot. By making him decide then and there, like, mm. hey, you want to try this relationship out or you want to never see me again? <laughs> yeah. You know, leading up to that, way before I met you, I was playing the field and I was, you know, hopeless romantic, like I've said before. And I've got tired of being hopeless romantic, tired of being scared of rejection. So I stopped looking. Oddly enough, once you stop looking, mm-hmm. you find the person. She, Carly, you, you didn't care for another relationship. I stopped looking. Yeah. Yeah. And me, I stopped looking because I no one wanted me. So I just I stopped. You just couldn't find the right people at the right time. Yeah. So it's all God's plan. (laughs) I stopped trying to. I stopped sliding into DMs. I just started going out and having fun more. (laughs) Meeting new people. Meeting new people. Playing the field. Playing the field. Yep. And eventually. Eventually, it's like you just gotta stop looking for love, and it'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Don't look for it; it'll come to you. I agree. So that was a bonus story for you all. We didn't plan on telling that one either, but you are welcome. You now know how Davis and I made it official. I, I basically forced him into this relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you like it, all I'm right? I'm trapped now. <laughs> Somebody's like, is Davis okay? <laughs> send, <laughs> send help. Blink yeah. twice. Oh, there's no, rec- <laughs> there's no recording <laughs> on here. All right. So the next, the next question actually is interesting because it kind of leads in like what we were just talking about leads into the next question so when did you realize that you were catching feelings for me but i'm going to give the definition of catching feelings first so catching feelings just means developing romantic feelings for someone and actually you know what i'm going to go first because i want to tell you when i first started feelings for you and whenever i want to tell you about the time when I first started catching feelings for you and see if our timelines like kind of match up. So for me, I first started catching feelings for you whenever you would want to go on like day dates or something with me. You didn't want to just go like most guys are like, oh, let's meet up here and have grab dinner late and like, you know, because they have other things on their mind that they want to do. And I was like, ah, I want to like actually get to know someone and like uh, have like a day date and like, walking dead? 
Yeah, I'm t- let me get to my story, bro. Right. Come on now. Interrupt. <laughs> rude. Rude. But no, so we both like this TV show called Walking Dead. I know, don't judge me. It's a really good show, even though it's like a bunch of zombies and stuff. But we both liked it. And it's actually filmed here That's in so Georgia. Nice. No pun intended. <laughs> a dead show. Walking Dead. I think they're still going on. It's just like not good anymore. But yeah, so it's actually filmed here. And the place that it's filmed, what is it? Sonoya? Yeah, yeah, Sonoya, Sonoya. Sonoya. I think season three, like the town in season three, Woodbury, Woodbury yeah, is there. And then um, Alexandria. Alexandria. This is all like towns in the TV show. And the set is there um, that they film on. And he was like, hey, I think since we're both Walking Dead fans, we should really go here. And I'm like, you know what? I've been wanting to go here for a long time, but I don't have any of my friends. Well, one, I didn't really have friends up here because I had just moved to Georgia like the year before. But I was like, also, none of my friends like it and everybody will be bored but me. So I was like, let's do this. Let's go. And we just made a whole day out of it. It was like a couple hour drive there and back. I don't even remember. Like an hour and a half? I don't know. And then, yeah, we spent most of the day there exploring. And it happened to be St. Patrick's Day, which we totally forgot about. (laughs) Um, So there was like a lot of St. Patrick's Day parades and stuff going on. And it was just really fun. And I like that day was the day that I kind of had that thought like, I might be catching feelings for you. Now, I had that initial thought on that day, and I know it wasn't until like a month or so later, whenever, yeah, about a month later, that I was like, hey, I want to date you. If you don't, then, you know, you got to (laughs) go. But that was the day for me that I felt like, okay, yeah, this could be something. And like, I think I'm low-key catching feels, but when did you start catching feelings for me? Let's rewind back to that walking dead you can't steal my story no i'm not walk- i'm not stealing it but when i invited you out to that it wasn't because i was catching feelings for you i'm not gonna lie well, i was just like oh we like the same things i'm bored you're probably bored all my friends are busy with their girlfriends hey you want to go this walking dead wow. thing with me and- the whole time i thought you were being sweet and thoughtful no well wow. I, I was being thoughtful I was like oh I, I like walking dead you like walking dead so let's go have some fun together but i think it was more of Uh, Instead of going out, we stayed in on some weekends and we would do movie nights and then we'd be silly, you know, face mask, you face mask, all that. And the conversations never die. It was never a dull moment. And we would always, you know, we would have the same songs in our head at the same time, Mm -hmm. the same lines or thinking the same thought. Doing finishing this, each other's sentences and, and doing the same dance moves right afterwards yeah you know the the whoa <laughs> okay. that was when i was like whoa this is so weird whoa. this is the spark for me yeah. Aww, doing cool. all that i know it was way after the um walking dead date but you know it, again my social flirty cues are not there <laughs> it just clicks when it clicks for me and that was when i was i thought to myself oh okay i think this is the one for me i'm gonna throw a bonus question at you since we're talking about you know dating and everything and all this stuff it took actually a long time for us to say the l word to each other the l-o-v-e love and i did say it first oh my god you're making me sound like such a clingy person i'm really not but i did say it first because i caught feelings and then we dated for like six months maybe i think it was and i was like man i'm actually like really into this person this person is amazing like there was so many different things like you were thoughtful you were kind of course I thought you were handsome I still think you're the most handsome guy in the world but there was so many things about you and the fact that I have you know uh, I was a single mom and I had my son and you just gravitated towards him and you know kind of quickly became a father figure to him even though nobody asked you to do that everything just made me love you more so I had to finally say it. And I remember, I think we were downtown. I think we had gone to like the aquarium or something that day. And I tried to hold your hand. And (laughs) if you don't know, I remember (laughs) Davis is, if you guys don't know, I think I've said it plenty of times, but Davis is Vietnamese, Vietnamese American. And a lot of Vietnamese people do not show affection like PDA, which is public display of affection. They don't really show physical affection affection like hugging or holding hands or kissing or anything like that um, out in public but americans especially white people like myself we do that all the time like we love to hug we love to hold hands we love to like grab arms you know we just love like love so it had been like six months and i was 
I was dead set on not being the first one to say I love you. But after this like perfect little date, we went to like World of Coke and the aquarium or whatever. We were walking downtown and I wanted to hold your hand so bad. So like I brushed my hand up against yours and I tried to grab it and you like quickly pulled away. And I was like, (laughs) I literally, I think I said something along the lines of like, do you not love me or something you love me? <laughs> or something like that because i was like i think i really love you or i like i like you a lot i don't know but can i please hold your hand so that was like the first time i said i love you and i really it's just because i wanted to hold your hand i felt awkward after six months of dating you just walking beside you like <laughs> just walking beside you on the sidewalk but I had felt love for you way before that, maybe, uh-huh. especially like when our, you know, our relationship grew a little bit more in the first few months. But yeah, I think it took about six months to actually say that I love you. What about what about you? I think I don't remember. I don't really I remember first, either. This is I, so bad. I think it was shortly after you said it first, I said it. But when every time you would say I love you to me, I would respond with, oh, um, I adore you. Oh, and, and, I remember. Yeah. I was like. It's the same word as the other word, just spelt differently. Yeah, for some, whatever reason, I guess it's the whole Asian thing. <laughs> he, he like had so much trouble saying the L word, the love word. So He's he would say game. like, I like you a lot or yeah. I adore you or, you know, I don't know, something, <laughs> something <laughs> along those lines. I, I think it's because I grew up in the Vietnamese household where my Vietnamese mom wouldn't say I love you to me, but she would show it with like food or gifting me things. So the, she shows love without saying I love you. It's, yeah. And it's weird. So to this day, I find it kind of weird to say it to my mom now that she's more open to saying it to me. And that was thanks to our, like our son, like grandkids really they like softened her out a lot. And now she's like, oh, I, I'll say I love you to my grandsons every day, you know, so she's changed a lot, too. But yeah, because of that, saying love was very cringy to me, but I still felt that it was weird. I think, yeah, Davis had trouble saying love until and this is even more mushy, you guys, until he became a father himself and still until our our youngest son was born like you know our oldest son even though davis raised him uh, still davis came in when he was three years old so davis is technically a stepdad but definitely plays the father figure very well but our youngest son is fully davis's and i and i i still have that picture of the first time you ever held him and i could tell that you weren't going to have any trouble saying love after that because oh, yeah. that was easy after that <laughs> yeah that you was, say it every day now I that was think. pretty immediate you know love. like i had to say it you had to you didn't want to no i mean it's like it's like trying to hold off from saying that word for so long and ever since that day it's like oh it's time to say it <laughs> it's yeah. time to start saying it because you felt it i think you yeah, felt it I felt strong a lot i think you felt it a lot so i know that was a little bit of a of a tangent so we didn't really plan this so we have i have a final question for you all i know we kind of went off on a tangent there for a little bit but a final question for davis not you all unless you want to answer in the comments but have you ever been a rebound or had a rebound relationship. But before you answer, I want to give the definition of rebound. Rebound is just dating someone new shortly after a breakup, often as a way to get over an ex. So you have a relationship that doesn't end well, you guys break up, and then immediately after or shortly after, you find yourself in a new relationship. That is what we call a rebound. First of all, let me just say, I think these words would be great for a video i know these words you can still do it i I can still do it it's not it's not too late i think you still do it let me know in the comments if you want a video out of these words because i could totally make one for you all it could be it could be posted in february oh valentine's day video yeah i know yeah when we get a uh, a love theme but to answer your question about rebounds yeah no i have never been a rebound because no one has ever given me the opportunity okay so yeah wow there's that and had i have i had a rebound relationship no because you're my first uh no one gave me the opportunity for for them to be a rebound for me i don't know what it's like it sounds like it sucks (laughs) <laughs> so maybe I'm happy that I wasn't a rebound for you know someone. What? God or... was just waiting because he knew that I was just the most perfect person for you. And I think that's. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> now I'm feeling awkward. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Carly? Are you, have you been a rebound or had a rebound? So I feel like 
I definitely, I don't think I've been a rebound. I'm trying to think back on my past relationships. I don't think I've been a rebound for anyone, but I have, unfortunately, and embarrassingly, I have had a rebound before. Yes. I so, <laughs> all right. So I've only had a handful of potential suitors in my life. Uh, boyfriends in the past only a handful but I only had a handful uh, of potential suitors or boyfriends in the past one of them um, and I do feel really bad I'm not gonna I'm gonna make up names don't out him yeah I'm not gonna out him he's gonna know if he ever watches this I don't know somehow but <laughs> we're, we'll just call him his initials HJ HJ um, I won by the <laughs> yeah, way I'm stupid <laughs> um so HJ um he was my rebound and it's because i was dating this guy we'll just call him d his initial i was dating d and we didn't really break up because like we wanted to it was just like life was taking us in different directions and sometimes that that happens and you know it's perfectly fine like he was going to go to grad school in another country and then i was coming back to america so i i was living in korea at the time and so was he but he was moving to a different country i was moving to a different country it wasn't going to work out so we just broke up but I came back to America and I was like, oh, I don't like this feeling. I don't want to be all sad about D. So I need to find someone else. And I found HJ and I dated HJ for like maybe two-ish months. And he was definitely a rebound. And turns out he was a little bit crazy. So I had to get myself away from that situation. So yeah, shamelessly. I did have a rebound before, but I don't know. Maybe I was somebody's rebound and they just never told me. I I, I mean, I don't think so. I kind of remember all the guys I've dated and if they've dated before or after me. And surprisingly enough, I think almost every guy I've ever dated, I was one of their first girlfriends, if not their first. So I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I know it's already been over 30 minutes and we could probably talk for another 30 minutes about everything you need to know about dating, especially all the, the lingo that you learned today. And you know, not only the lingo, you learned a little bit more about teacher Carly and Davis. He finally got to hear his voice, my husband. Yeah. Maybe next time you can be in the video. And it's they not can... that attractive. Oh my gosh, he's so humble. But yeah. we thank you for enjoying this with us today i think i had a lot of fun what about you oh yeah this is my first podcast being on here um it was definitely interesting yeah i, I was a little nervous okay. but now first that time. it's like I'm, I'm just talking to my best friend again oh yeah. best friend is me not you guys no, i'm just kidding yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i love you all but thank you for joining us today on another episode of tea with carly i hope you enjoyed this episode featuring davis hi <laughs> <laughs> if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what topics you would like to hear from me or us. You know, we could do more. He's literally my husband. He's here with me 24-7. So I cut all the videos. Yeah, so he's here more. always. He's working on the videos one way or another. So let us know what you'd like to hear in the comments. And we hope to see you all in the, in next, the next episode. Oh. In the next episode. Okay, <laughs> good again, ready? And we hope to see you all in, in the, the next, next episode. episode.